Hi and welcome to introduction to grid tie inverters for solar panels and wind turbines. In this video I'm going to be trying to answer two questions. What is an inverter and what is a grid tie inverter? Now when I got into this I realized that was probably too much for a single video. Um, video. So in this video we're going to be addressing the first of those. What is an inverter? And then in part two, a separate video, we're going to be talking about specifically what is different about a grid tie inverter. So let's get started with part one. What is an inverter? In this section, I'm going to be looking at a definition. Why, why the term inverter? How does an inverter work? And we're going to finish off by looking at the output quality of an inverter. So let's get going. Let's start with a quick definition. An inverter is an electrical device that converts direct current, DC, to alternating current, AC. Simple as that. So why inverter? Where does that word come from? Well, a small history lesson. In the 19th century, devices for converting between AC and DC were known as converters. Now, some of these converters, they were electromechanical, of course, could be made to run backwards, converting DC to AC. Hence, inverted converter and over time that was shortened to plain and simple inverter. So that is where the name inverter comes from. So how does an inverter work? I, I just want to in the next few minutes give you the most basic understanding of the most basic type of inverter. Please do not worry, I'm going to try and keep this as non-technical as possible, at least in the beginning, at the late, later stages I might make it a tiny bit technical. So let's try and keep this as simple as, can, as we can. I'm sure you'll recognize a 9 volt battery at the bottom there. At the top, the circle and the arrow is supposed to represent a DC voltmeter. Let's wire it up, and as you'd expect, the needle flicks, and we'd expect that to be reading plus 9 volts. If we swap the wires around, we'd expect the needle to flick the other way to minus 9 volts. And we can amuse ourselves by flicking the wires back and forwards and have the needle flick back and forwards between plus and nine volts. Notice that it looks a little bit alternating. If we um, move on to drawing a graph, let's wire it up. We flick the needle to the right and a, a graph of voltage over time is, as you'd expect, a horizontal line at plus nine. If we swap the wires around, we again get a horizontal line this time at minus 9 volts. And I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to do next. Flick back between the two states and over time we create something that looks suspiciously like a, a square wave. So actually we've done it. We've we've taken our 9 volt battery and by mucking around with the wires we've, we've um, managed to trick it into giving us an AC output. Can we get just a tiny bit technical now? I felt this video wouldn't be complete unless we had one um, circuit diagram in it. My apologies if that looks horrendous, but if we if we kind of make a couple of things happen here, I think you might understand what's going on. So first of all, what I'm going to do is close the switch on the left-hand side. That sets up, of course, a DC circuit with a battery. Um, those vertical lines, if you don't know, represent a battery. Um, so we have the current from the battery flowing in conventional current terms through a coil around through the switch back through the battery again. Now because we've gone from 0 volts to 9 volts let's say, let's say we're still using our 9 volt battery, um, we have changed the current in that coil and that induces a change of current in the other coil. So we would see um, if there was a, this was a real circuit that the meter on the right, that's indicated by the, the circle and the, and the arrow, the, the arrow, the, sorry, the arrow, the pointer the pointer in the meter would flick to the right. Now if we take our switch that is at the left and we switch it the other way, then we again have a DC circuit, we again have a change from 0 to 9 volts in a coil, and we again have an induced current in the other coil, and that would make the needle in our, in our meter flick the other way. And of course, I'm sure you know what I'm going to do next, I'm going to flick it back, flick the switch back and forth, back and forth, and here we have 
Uh, well, it's a real inverter, actually. Um, this, I mean, obviously the simplest design you could possibly imagine. So I hope that wasn't too horrible. I hope that shows that we can, with a relatively simple um, circuit, we can, in theory anyway, take our battery um, producing DC and have it produce us some form of AC. So let's wrap up part one by talking about waveform quality for a couple of minutes. Now what we've seen so far are square waves. Now the problem with a square wave is that it has a high level of harmonic distortion. Without getting into too much detail on that, it's basically a dirty supply compared to what we'd like to have, generally speaking, a clean supply. Now a square wave can be used to power some electrical appliances, light bulbs would be fine with it for example, but it's completely unsuitable for many and, and there are things that would actually damage. Now we don't need to labour the point too much because square wave output in um, or inverters that produce a square wave output are actually becoming quite rare. Much less rare are inverters that produce what is known as a modified square wave. Um, now this is also, you'll also see this described as a modified sine wave or a quasi sine wave. And this is a little bit sneaky because um, the manufacturers know that many people know that a sine wave is good, square wave is bad. So they're really trying to come up with names that associate this thing with a, um, with a sine wave rather than with a square wave. And obviously it has a lot more in, in common with a square wave than a sine wave. Um, it does have lower harmonic distortion than a, than a square wave and there are various kind of smoothing circuits that can be used to, to smooth it out even more and make it look kind of like a nice smooth sine wave, kind of. Um, but I guess the problem is that it still has rather a lot of harmonic distortion. Um, but because it is somewhere between the two, between pure square wave and pure sine wave, it can be used for a wider range of appliances. I probably wouldn't feed that to my high-end stereo though. So let's move on to talk about the sine wave, which of course is our ultimate aim. And you might see this devices re uh, referred to as true sine wave or pure sine wave uh, devices. It's essentially a clean supply and some inverters are actually um, capable of taking a DC input and producing um, a, an output that it is as clean or cleaner than your, um, than your main supply. So it does have low harmonic distortion and a buzzword to look for here is THD, um, total harmonic distortion, which is basically a measure of how close to a perfect sine wave the output actually is. A technology to look for is pulse, pulse my goodness, that's really hard to say, pulse width modulation, which is a clever way um, of taking the, the, um, the DC input and producing something very, very close to a sine wave as, a, as output. Now, the beauty of a sine wave output is that it's suitable for all appliances. If you invest in a, a pure sine wave inverter, you won't really have to worry about what you plug into it. Everything should work um, perfectly well. And of course, a pure sine wave is what you get from your power company. So it shouldn't be a surprise to learn that a pure sine wave is what the power company will expect back from you. And of course, I'm now talking about a, a grid tie situation. Um, I don't want to get into too much detail now because that's really the, the purpose of part two, but I'm, I'm sure that statement won't surprise you that the grid tie inverters are true sine wave devices. So I think this is the place where we need to stop for this part one. I hope we've answered the question, what is an inverter? And I look forward to talking to you in part two, where we'll hopefully be answering the question, what is a grid tie inverter and what is special about it, if anything. See you in part two.